The Share Pickers Weekend Podcast with Justin, Paddy, Peter, and Steve. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Welcome to the Weekend Podcast. I'm joined by Steve, and the parts of Pete and Paddy will be played by Steve as well. Well done, Steve. He's a man of many talents, many, mm. many voices, many faces, many outfits, and many meals. Yeah. How's, it, how's, it, how's your eating going these days, Steve? Uh, are, you, are you in the gym? Are you, you know, exercising? Are you eating healthily? What's it like? What's it like? Funny enough, I am actually on a reduced eating plan at the moment. So. <laughs> I love that. A reduced. Basically, said I've, eaten, I've been eating too much. <laughs> That's the problem with me, you see. I, do you know what portion control is very hard, isn't it? Oh, I mean, I... Literally, literally, I mean, the other day, Megan, um, we're trying to, you know, we're going away in, in July to Turkey, I think it is, and um, a good month now to start eating healthily, you know, reduce the And Megan made some sort of, these triple oven chips and a pie the other day, right? And I had like three portions of chips and I could not move. I was in pain. My stomach was in pain. I literally couldn't, dr- I was thirsty, but I couldn't drink. I couldn't put any water in. It's like literally, portion growth is very hard, isn't it? You know, yeah, mod- that's not mod- good. Moderation. You know, that kind of thing. People said, oh, everything in moderation. Moderation is very hard. The problem, I've always been a big eater for the size of me anyway. But of recent, I remember foods that, unless they've shrunk the size of food of recent, food that I struggled to eat a couple of years ago, I can now finish off and probably have a dessert as well. So I'm like, (laughs) that means I'm eating way too much food. And I I know I'm eating too much food. So it's and it's hard, isn't it? Like you eat a bit of food, you're like, I want to eat more, but you know, I don't need to eat more. But yeah, so yeah, reduced eating plan for me. But listen, but. I'm, I'm not a moderate guy, you know. I mean, people are that saying, you know, everything in moderation is fine for you, but yeah, moderation is hard. You go to the pub and have one pint, or you have one chocolate biscuit. It's hard. You can't do it. Mm. It's impossible. I can't have one pint. I don't particularly, I don't enjoy, I, I do like, uh, say, say, on a nice warm day, a nice cider in, this, in, in, in the sun, but I can't leave it at one. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just it's hard work, isn't it? You know, but uh, anyway, I think Pete. Pete, I think, has moved to France because he's sick of Brexit and Boris Johnson. I think that's where he is at the moment. Uh, he's uh, he's called remote working. Alan I Schitt, love it how yeah. he's po- pointing it as if he's yeah, it's all work, and I'm like, it's not. You're out on cycles and yeah, yeah, cycles, yeah, and bikes. And, uh, he's in, in, the, in, the, in the Alps somewhere. He's in in the place, isn't he? No, I don't think he's in the Alps, but he's in a, a place where uh, it normally is used for skiing. But he's uh, they got a lodge there apparently, and uh, and Paddy. It's in New York. Look at that very international weekend podcast here. They're not joining us. But uh, he's in New York uh, because apparently... I, I said, um, do you know, Megan said the other day, oh, Paddy's got a film out. Um, we should go and see it. John McGarren. John McGarren. I said, who? John, he's doing a film about John McGarren. I said, who the hell is John McGarren? I said, John McEnroe, you maniac. Said, oh, yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah. I said, it's funny because Megan's younger than me. And I said, have you never heard of John McEnroe? And I said, well, not really. I said, well, he's a, he's a legend. He's a legend in the world of tennis. Unbelievable. He was a guy. I mean, tennis was quite a... I mean, there, there were a few Nastasi before him, but there were a few characters uh, in, in tennis. But it was quite a sedate game, you know? The, uh, the, uh, mm-hmm. the champion at the time when McEnroe came along was Bjorn Borg from uh, Sweden. Very, you know, gentleman, very quiet player. And uh, then McEnroe came along, started shouting at the, t- the umpires, didn't he? He cannot be serious, man! And he, he literally, I, mean, I think Bjorn Borg won out six Wimbledons on a trot. He, was, he seemed like un- invincible at the time. And then McEnroe came along, loudmouth American, shouting at the umpires and beat him. And uh, so he, he had talent, and he was basically a, 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 a you know, court brat, but uh, very intended to watch. So and, I don't and see all that fairness, And all fairness to Megan, I'm, only, I'm probably closer to her age than you are, and... I don't remember him from the original times, so I oh, obviously yeah. know of him from working in media and stuff. But yeah, yeah. I don't, know, I don't remember him actually playing tennis. So. Oh, he was, a, he, was a, he was a whirlwind of the sport. He really broke up the sport and you know attracted people to it because he was just such a character. He would, you know, he would argue like hell, throw his racket, but also he had talent to back it up. You know, and um, and now actually he features in the you know, BBC uh, commentary and all that stuff. But um, yeah. when you go back to it, you think in that day and age, I remember in the eighties. And it was uh, Borg and, uh, versus Macrino in the Wimbledon. And it was like, you know, everyone would watch it. It was like the family would sit around because people, you know, you didn't have to be a fan of tennis. He, he, was, he, he had a, that sort of crossover appeal because he was so entertaining. You didn't know what he was going to do, you know. So, um, yeah. So, uh, anyway, for Paddy, that's what Paddy's been working on. He's been a bit secretive about it, only for months. And um, in fact, he's been working on it for probably years, isn't he, I think. Well, but, you've been making up a lot of stories of recent of his actual, what he's been doing. But you know, yeah. that is actually what he's been doing for yeah, the last couple of years. So, he's been actually. 
in New York filming pieces with John McEnroe. I don't, it's, it's so secretive. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say it yet. But I mean, the, I'm assuming you want some kind of, you know, people to talk about it because the yeah. public uh, isn't it the fifteenth? I think it was. Uh, uh, yeah, I think now it's been released. I think he's probably yeah. fine with that. Otherwise, there's something not quite right there. His publicity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're a fan of McEnroe or tennis, it's worth going. You can only see it in the cinemas. Apart from you said you did say on WhatsApp, you got a, um, a dark web version. I got a dark web version. Yeah, yeah. really yeah. odd, odd opening sex scene. <laughs> which. Um... Yeah, I, I think you picked the wrong one, this. Steve. You think? Okay. Yeah, I can't, I can't see that fitting. Uh, anyway, let's uh, stock market. Bloody hell. Do oh, you know what? Let's I've see. literally stopped looking at my portfolio and I did glance at it yesterday just because I know uh, I was probably going to be the only one on this morning, um, yeah. on this weekend. It's, 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 do you know what? I'm actually relatively surprised. Obviously, it's not gone up. It is a little bit down, but actually, I was expecting it to be thousands and thousands down and actually it's kind of stagnated from what it was yes. when I stopped looking at it about two, three weeks ago. So... I'm not as disappointed as I thought I was going to be, but still, it's still not great, is it? No, that's a, that's a good point, this, Steve, right? Because um, I did say on Twitter yesterday, I said, you know, I was getting annoyed today. Sometimes, because I'm in it every day looking at the markets and the prices and all that stuff, after a while, it does get you. It's like a, a, a woodpecker pecking on the side of your head. You know, you can, you can order for a little bit, but uh, in the end, you just grab the wood. Get off, stop pecking my head! It's mm. like that. It's like a, So I, I was getting really annoyed yesterday. I looked at the market. It was, you know, most of them are red again. <clears throat> and in fact, I was looking at... It's, it's, a, it's a mis- I shouldn't be looking at certain sites you look at. They, they record the trades as they go through. So, you know, another site show the mid price. So what that means is when you see a trade go through and it's a sell, it, 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 it'll show up as red. It doesn't mean that the stock actually moves down, but it just shows the last trade as red. So all my portfolios are showing red. But in actual fact, if you look at the mid prices, they hadn't really moved that much. The difference, you know, the mid between the bid and the offer, what you pay and what you sell for. They hadn't really moved that much. But I just, it just got to me, I thought, this is so annoying. This is so annoying. And um, <clears throat> it's a constant. And in fact, it's in the shower just now, right? And I started singing, What is happening to stock market? Stock market? Stock market? And I started singing this, What is happening to the stock market? Will it ever go up? And I thought, Yes, it does go up. And, um, and I thought, I've got to switch off, uh, really, because we are investing in micro cap stocks. And the reason why I'm investing in micro cap stocks is they can do several hundred percent over the years. You know, if you get the right businesses, they can go from sort of, you know, small cap to mid cap or micro cap to, you know, um, small cap, then mid cap, if you get the right business. Uh, and so if you are sitting on a, like a 50% loss, paper loss, and that's all it is, it's a paper loss, you know, values go up and down, um, then over time, there's no point worrying about that because if, if that stock can do several hundred percent you know, you shouldn't worry about it. You can't, you're never going to pick the bottom. I mean, it'll help you if you can average in a little bit right now. If it's a good, if the business you're invested in is down like 50% and is still operating well, um, which shows you the market. I did say this a couple of weeks back. <clears throat> it shows you the market is largely based on emotion. When a, uh, the valuation of a company can tank 50% in a couple of months and yet the operations haven't changed and previously to the fall... It wasn't overvalued. It shows the emotions of the markets. You know, everyone's well, it's even it's even the opposite. You look at um, Escape, sorry, um, uh, XP Factory. Like mm. they had some fantastic, well, yeah. very good results, and it went up in the day and then pulled straight back down again. You like that, in a normal mar- in a normal good market, that would have actually probably flown, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, a couple of stocks. In fact, we'll talk about truth in a bit. But I mean, it's, it's in a in a in a bear market, right? Everyone focuses on the risk. In a bull market, everyone focuses, you know, almost wholly on the reward. You know, there's little bits of worry in between, but, and really, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know sway between these extremes that happens. The market always oversells, and it always overbuys. You know, bull markets they run too hot and they have to have a correction, and then in, in bear markets they run too cold and it has to bounce. And I think, like you just said, then it wasn't as bad as I thought. Cause it's dropped, but I think we are bumbling around trying to find a bottom here, and that and, and bottoms are formed, you know, over weeks, months, and don't happen overnight. You'll see, like the S and P five hundred, I think, which is the biggest market uh, in the world, pretty much in America, that had a two percent drop yesterday after inflation figures come out, and it's done that now a couple of times in the last month, and I think it's it's only it's only four times, uh, no, four times it has done that in the last month, um, and. If you look back historically, it doesn't do that very often. And normally what it's trying to do is find a bottom. You got, you know, whip saws up and down. So it may grind a little lower, but uh, I think we're, we're around about here because uh, if you look at the aim all shit, down 30%. Now people say, oh, what about a recession? Yeah, but it's, it's pricing in a recession. That's what the markets do. It's correcting to try and find the value of that, you know. And so right now, even if we have a recession now, the market won't go a lot lower. In fact, the market may even rally through the recession because... 
recession figures are backward looking. You know, how, how you determine a recession is two quarters of uh, slower growth in the GDP. But once you know that, you're six months on the line, you know? Um, and so the markets will see that happening and they, they, they'll rally a, a lot before that. So I think we're already the market is pricing in a recession. Um, you shouldn't be worried about it because if you get inflation figure happens, or, you know, figures on a monthly basis, then as long as you see inflation not getting worse, um, then I think the markets will start to rally. Uh, and the trouble is yesterday, why I had a big sell-off yesterday? Because in America, they got the CPI inflation data come out and it showed inflation is still getting a little bit worse. Not huge amounts. So they expected, I, I think, uh, CPI inflation of 8.3 and it came in 8.6, I think. So at the moment... It is getting a little bit worse, but it's not massively worse, you know. And I think over time, of course, those like-for-like -like comparisons will, will go down and ease. And once they start easing and people see it's not getting any worse, the markets will start to rally. But, um, yeah, so it, it is frustrating. and I think we'll bounce around here for, for a long time. And, um, yeah, what well, do you know, looking, looking at um, Trufin, you know, Trufin this week. I don't know if you read the, see the news, Steve, right? But they, did, you, did you read the RNS this week? What no. I didn't know. You did, Stephen, you did. I this. told you. I've not, I told you. I've not really been looking at stocks and shares. I've just yeah, been yeah, trying best. to pretend, pretending I don't have any money anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's the best thing to do. I mean, so they announced this week two, two news, bits of news. First of all, Play Stack, which is it was um, it was good news. Maybe not as significant as people think, but they bought a company called Magic Fuel Games, right, in the in the US for three million dollars. Now, have you ever heard of Sim City? Yes. But well, do you remember that in the back of the day it was massive, wasn't it? Everyone was, mm, didn't yeah. understand what it was about. It was a simulation. Basically, you build cities, communities, and all this stuff. And it was very big. You burn them down. Yeah, yeah. Well, these guys created that. now, And they're now doing Cityscape, I think, a similar one. But this is very clever. So, Trufin announced they bought this um, company, right? And they said, uh, simult simultaneous with the acquisition, Playstack has signed a significant contract with a global technology platform, which Magic Fuel will be instrumental in delivering. I thought, that's convenient. Isn't it? Literally, they bought this company and simultaneously they've got this global uh, significant contract. So, which, which, so I think what's it going to I mean, it'll probably be Microsoft or one of those companies because they'd previously done a sort of deal with, with them for Mortal Shell, one of the other games on the platform. Uh, but I think if you look at it, if you think what Trufin are doing now, Trufin are just, they are launching this, starting to launch their in ad tech um, software and SDI, whatever, I don't know how they do it, but I mean, you know, they put ads in, in, in games that are non intrusive, they sit naturally in the game, you know. So, for example, I mean, Bidstack do the same thing, but the difference between Bidstack and Playstack is Playstack have a studio of games as well. They have their own games, they publish games, they help uh, gamers raise money to launch games. So, it's a lot bigger enterprise, but uh, they can also now put uh, ad, ads in software, like on billboards. Or, and if you think about SimCity or something like that, when you go through a city, in a real city, there's loads of advert, adverts, aren't there? Like billboards and all that stuff everywhere, you know? So I'm thinking uh, their Interact platform, which is the ad tech side, is going to be launched in this new game, sort of um, that uh, Magic Fuel are launching. But anyway, that's that was just one bit of news, right? That wasn't, I mean, obviously not huge news. Then another part of the business, Otago, which is invoice lending software, which they've done a deal with Lloyd's, which, of course, Lloyd's, if you, if you started a business, Steve, a software business, right, you said, this is going to be good for, like, you know, invoices, people who need cash flow. Um, so, so what happens is, let's say, let's say, for example, you, Steve, you've got a business, right? And you, you, you've got, like, say, 10 employees. You, you turn over, say, a couple of mil, and you've got people who pay you late all the time. But you need that cash flow, you know, because you've, you've got to make payroll. You've got other bills to pay. Um, so you've got the Satago software. So what it does is you lend money, you borrow money from it, first of all, but it's an automated system that basically bombards your, your, your payers, with emails every day unless they pay. It automates it completely. So they say on average it saves seven hours of work in admin. Stargo will do it for you. Plus, there's a 72% uh, more success rate in getting your bills paid. So it's a phenomenal bit of software and it works very well. So they did a d deal with Lloyd's. Now, if you create that software, Steve, right, you know, back in the day, and thought, who, could, who would be a good partner of this? One of your dream partners, if you wrote up a list of dream partners, right, one of the biggest banks in the UK would be it. And they did a deal with Lloyds. Now, that's huge. A massive deal, you know. And then this week, they announced a deal with Sage as well, which is also another FTSE 100 company. It's like, if you had a dream list of companies, <coughs> these two would be on that list. And they are FTSE 100 companies. They are valued. At a, generally, FTSE 100 companies are valued about $5 billion. So, uh, so Sage is about $7 billion in valuation. Lloyds is $32 billion in valuation. And little Satago has now partnered with them. 
Um, so that's a huge uh, announcement. And it says here that basically Lloyd's is going to be the bank in the UK, which uh, they'll, they'll sell it through, they'll use, they'll promote the software through their, their company and Sagewell. And around the world, Sage will hook up with other banks on which their loan book will be used. And I think, now, any other AIM company, right, that did a deal with two FTSE 100 companies, that news would send the share price rocketing. Yeah. Absolutely rocketing. Because you can't get a better deal than that. As, as a software as a service provider, you can't get a better deal than that. It's like, how, how does it get better than that? Two FTSE 100 companies. And yet, it went up 7%. And then dropped on <laughs> dropped on Friday. I thought, what the hell is wrong with this market? It's nuts, isn't it? So- it's crazy, but you do think eventually when we start coming out of this hole, it this it's just going to be amazing, isn't it? Well, you'd like to think, yeah, hope yeah. to think so anyway. I genuinely, I, mean, I was talking with Paul Hill about this, and um, and the figures you have so far, there are forecasts for Lloyd's, just just Lloyd's and Satago deal. Now, if you if you look at um, if you look at Truefin's market cap, it's eighty million. All right, there's four companies in there. Two are profitable. It's Virtus and Oxygen. Uh, Oxygen, for example, is is, is a uh, um, a market leader in in public uh, authority invoice lending and all that stuff. Uh, and Virtus is is profitable as well. But the two exciting parts of the business yet to sort of get rolled out and commercialised are going to be profitable. They're funded to profitability, uh, and yet so each of one of these companies, if you split it up equally, is worth twenty million, and that's ridiculous. It's like Lloyd's just. Uh, invested at a valuation in stock of 20 million, okay, and that was pre Lloyd's, so they did it on a pre Lloyd's deal basis. Now, with Lloyd's involved, it was a lot more impact. The figures out just from Lloyd's alone, not including Sage and their global rollout of Stargo, but they're saying if you look at a, a, a mid case scenario, they reckon um, they're going to be turning over 24 million in Stargo a year, uh, first few years, I think, um, <clears throat> and that is worth, they're putting it on 10 times sales, that is worth. Um, 163 million in valuation to Trufin. Trufin's valuation is 80 million. That's all it is. Now, uh, in fact, Paul Hill did say that he said, well, it's not worth 10 times sales. He, he, he's looking at, you know, peer group software companies. The average uh, sort of valuation for software as a service is five times sales. And I'm thinking, yeah, but this is not an average software company. You know, average software companies don't do deals with Lloyd's and Sage and get rolled out globally. So it is nuts. And you're right, if you look at the if you look at the chart of Trufin, it hasn't really come back that much. You know, if you look at the the aim all share from September last year, September 6th was the high, it's dropped 30%. And that's the index. It's not individual stocks. Of course, there are winners within that index. So some stocks have gone massively more than that, dropped more than that. And yet Satag, I'm saying yet Trufin's share price has pretty much gone flat. So that's a proof of strength, you know, in a down market, when a company can hold its share price and just go sideways, that proves strength. So when the, mm. when the market turns, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like, uh, it's like uh, let's go back to the kayak and the river analogy. If you're on a river and you're paddling away against the current, but you're going backwards, that's most stocks at the moment, you know. Uh, Stargo or Trufin is paddling away and it, basically they're making a bit of headway and they're coming back a bit. So they're, they're, going, they're, they're not going backwards, but they're not going forward. But you turn round into the current and uh, it'll really start motoring. But um, yeah, that's the that's you know, bear market. It's so annoying, so annoying. Um, but like I said, you know, for people who don't know about Trufin or, or need to do some research, bear market's a perfect time to research. Because you know, in a normal market, this share price would have rocketed. And you think, oh, I've missed a boat on that. And you jump in, fear of missing out. And you buy it a high, maybe, and it'd it, it pull back a bit, and you'd be sitting on a loss. But right now, it, it doesn't spike up. No price spikes up in this market. Very few. So it's an excellent time to do some research, you know? And, mm. um, have, you been, have you just sat there, Steve, and not... Have you bought anything? Have you sold anything? Uh, no, no, as you know, the only thing I bought, I did buy some more um, XPF factory. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, it did drop quite a bit. Uh, I think I bought around the 30 pence and it's down to about 25 or 26 now, isn't it? So I did buy a big chunk there about a month and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I do have a little bit more money, actually, which I could put into my ISA to invest. Um, I got a bit of money sat in my uh, my business account, which is kind of just doing nothing. So there is the temptation to do that because... Well, it's a new stock I mentioned to you. It's worth a look at. Um, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, yeah. but, but, by the way... Um, if you just post a video on, on Buffett, right? And um, it's funny, people, you know, take advice from traders on Twitter, all this stuff. And, and I'm thinking, if you look at this guy, I mean, 
he is a genius. Like, I've read his books, and he, you know, he started his first business when he was about 10 or 11, right? I think he bought some kind of... It was like a pinball machine he put it in one of the shops in his town at 11, right? And he was doing so well, he bought another one, put another shop. And so, basically, it was a good business idea. Well, he approached the shop owner and said, yeah, we'll split the revenue on this for no rent. And so it's a no-brainer for the actual establishment. Um, you know, these, like, soda stream stop shops they used to have in the 50s in, in America. Um, he said, you get half, uh, no rent, and I get half the money. And basically rolled out this little uh, business, putting pin pinball machines in every shop around his area, and he sold it, the business, for 1,200 quid to a war veteran. And he was like, he wasn't even... I think he's 12 or something like that. So <laughs> the guy is a genius. You know? he's, he's had business interests, and he bought his first stock around that age as well. Um, so he's not a normal guy, all right? And he, he's worth... Whenever I said, look, he's 91, he's experienced 17 bear markets. He holds stocks for the long term, and he's 91, and he's one of the most successful investors of all time. So his opinions are worth listening to, you know? And I think, what, what do you think he's doing right now? He's definitely Investing. not... Yeah, he's definitely not selling... Um, and he said, he said, basically, it's all about psychology. He said, if you, if you can't handle one of your stocks going down 50% more, then you shouldn't be in the market. It's going to happen. Um, and he said, the price of Berkshire Hathaway, which is his company, he said, it's done that three times. And that's a big company. It's worth, you know, it's, worth, it's one of the biggest market caps in, the, in this S&P 500. It's done a 50% drop more than three times in his history. And he said, nothing wrong with the business. Nothing wrong with the business then. That's the way the market is. But those are the times when the opportunity presents itself. That's when, if you want to beat the market and beat everyone else, you keep a little cash on the side, you invest in those times. Now, he says, I'm not going to say invest in stocks now or, or tomorrow or, or next month because you can't time the market. You're not going to find the bottom. Mm. You're not going to find the top. But if you put a regular amount in over a long period of time, you'll make good money, especially from these levels. You know, so, so many people, so many people say to that, do they? They say who don't do it, they're like, so is this a good time to invest? And I was like, might be, might not be. Who knows? If any mates want to get invested, in, right? If any mates want to get invested, they say, listen, I don't know where the market. I, mean, I can't guarantee the market's not going to down further. But the best way of investing is like a, a, for, for people not familiar with stocks that don't you know follow the stock market. Is a, a low cost, sort of, you know, high performing sort of fund, well diversified, like Vanguard, for example, and just put monthly amounts in over a long period of time, and you'll get a better return on your money than any yeah. anywhere else, pretty much. You know, that's exactly the advice I give. To be yeah. fair, mm. yeah, I know. So, um, yeah. So uh, at the moment, it's like you know, I, I was saying, that, you know, people are disappointed by Truefin, for example, the results. I said, well, we're in a bear market. This is not many. In a, it, nothing really works in a bear market as it would normally. You know, it's, it's just, it's we, we've been. You know, it's almost a storm happening. You know, there's no point going out in the storm and with a little umbrella. It doesn't work. You know, you just got to wait. And it's patience of the thing. It's, but it's so hard emotionally. And, and that's why, you know, we go back, and I mentioned this so many times, buy low, sell high. Uh, you know, it's so hard to do that. Uh, and mm. even though it seems quite easy, because when it comes to the markets, emotions involved. And you'll, you'll hear all kinds of fear upon fear talked about in a down market. You know, is this the biggest recession ever going to happen? You know, and you get all this and you start doubting you know, the, um, investing at good levels. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's tricky, you know, but um, what, what is, um, but, but the thing is, we all get worried about the recession, but in real life, you know, I mean, look at, let's look at XP, XPF's um, results. XP Factory. Now, you have to understand these are results up to the 31st of December. So that was a lockdown year, all right? Um, I think it was, what was it last year? Up until April, I think it was, wasn't it? We were locked down. And then again, in end of November, December, again, they were encouraging people to work from home. So it's not a full year. It's pretty much seven months of a year. But group revenue, and this is only on pretty much Escape Hunt because they acquired Boom Battle Bar late November, and then we went to lockdown pretty much. So there's hardly any revenue from Boom Battle Bar. Nevertheless, group revenue up 163% to 7 million. This is compared to a previous lockdown. So this is lockdown year or lockdown year comparisons. Um, and uh, EBITDA, 2.7 million, so... Cash there coming in, positive cash flow. And next year, right, not only that, Boom Battle Bar starts to kick in this year. Um, because it started off the end of the year, I think they had one owner-operated site, which is O2, and six franchisee sites. At the end of this year, just look at that. There are one, I'll repeat that again, one owner-operated, six franchisees. At the end of this year, they're expected to having seven owner-operated, so seven times as much, and 20 
franchisee sites. That's phenomenal, isn't it? That amount mm. of rate of growth. <clears throat> and so next year, of course, these bars will be opening throughout the year. So it's not as if they all opened on the 1st of January. So you're not going to get you know, that amount of revenue going in straight away. But it's going to be building throughout the year. But even so, so we got 163% growth this year. Uh, next, last year, sorry. Next year, with Boom Battles bars, they expect to have 250% growth. Um, and EBITDA margins above 20%. Which is, uh, you know, healthy margins, <clears throat> and so what was that? Let me just look at the thing. This so they're going to be at about 24 million in revenue from seven million this year, and profitable. And then again, above that, they're doing another what uh, I think is another 46 percent year after. And this is on, and this is, and they're, they're roadmap. And this is what I said: if you've got a company got like a roadmap to becoming, you know, um, a, a sort of mid cap, and you're worried about 50 percent drop in the share price, don't. It's going to happen, you know. But this, the, the, you know, XP Factor have a roadmap to become a pretty mid cap. And I worked out, in fact, it's worth looking at this. I worked out they had um, their, their targets. I don't know if you saw their targets for five years plus. But um, essentially, if they hit those targets, we, we're talking about 50 escape hunts, 100 boom battle bars. If they hit those targets, right, on 20% EBITDA, pretty much on, on the owner operated, and around about 80%, 70 to 80% on, on, on franchises, that's worth. 400 million pound market cap company so that's 900 percent up from where we are right now and so that's what we've got to focus on you know i mean what's going to stop them rolling those out they're all in this pre or they may they may go to the us but you know they, they it's a the business model will get better won't it they get better at rolling these out faster more efficient and as they get a bigger scale operations become more efficient what's going to stop them getting to that you know they've had targets before they've hit them they said they're going to be comfortably ahead of that they, they'll hit those um 27 boom battle bars comfortably by the end of this year so you, in these markets you just got to hold on and you and say look longer term longer term is the thing yeah long term buffett's 91 he's you know he's thinking long term how long term can he think yeah you know, it's like uh, you know buffett you are 91 fella my only concern is I, i'm still quite closely watching the war at the moment mm. and my concern is it just seems like it is going to go on for a long time and every time you feel that yeah. um, it's not coming to an end but uh, the ukrainians are gaining ground which potentially push russians out and then like the last couple of days or the last week the russians seem to be overpowering the ukrainians and you think Ugh. and you know the ukrainians won't stop so it just prolongs everything even longer isn't it and that's that's my only concern is how long is this going to go on for and yeah. And like I'm even like I wouldn't you know I, I, with like prices going up you know I'm kind of all right but even now you can look at price you're going this is getting ridiculous yeah, now yeah. prices you know even for someone who's got a bit of extra spare cash on the side that can afford the occasional uh, price high uh, price hike you go even I'm going do you know what this is, this is quite expensive now isn't it yeah yeah and, and do you know what yeah and. Uh... Yeah, a couple of things that someone asked me, he said, when do you think this is going to end, this stock market sell-off? And I said, well, first of all, stock market and the real market, two different things. You know, the market's sold off already. It's expecting some kind of recession. So it's pretty much, you know, a lot of it is baked in. We've done 30% drop on the AMOL share. That's a big drop. You know, it basically is correcting to say, you know, earnings are going to be 30% down, you know, on, so, so it's, you know, that's a big drop already. Uh, but secondly, someone asked me, when's it going to change? So that, first of all, if inflation figures don't get any worse, I said, what would cue it at all if someone kills Putin? That would overnight, that would see the market rally because you wouldn't have this, you know, the, 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 the grain and the wheat and steel and all that coming from um, you know, that, that area uh, would be released to help. Um, I don't know, because I know what we all say and everyone thinks that it is just Putin, which probably is the case, but I don't know, there's a little part of me, if someone did take out Putin or he had a, is, he died of cancer or whatever he's supposed to be terminally ill with, tomorrow you go, is someone else just going to jump in his space I and just know, carry I, on? No, he's, a, he's, a, he's an absolute ruler, you know, there's, they, they know there'd be, literally, I think they'd collapse. I mean, right now, I said, apart from, you know, aside from that, if you, if you look, there is pressure building um, within Russia now. I mean, you're getting a lot of mothers of soldiers marching, saying, where's my son? Because they I are... I haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah, and P Putin is... And also, uh, but I, what I also thought this week, Steve, is you know what Ukraine has been pushed back in the news agenda a little bit, you know? Mm. Uh, like before, it was all about Ukraine. And the same problems, even worse, are happening now out there, and yet it's getting less coverage. Part of me thought, um, this. Uh, I've noticed that they said, you know, Russia are... 
uh, you know, making attacks on the city and making more advances. I don't think making more advances, but artillery, artillery are flattening cities. Um, and I thought, it, and, 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 and almost you got the impression that Ukraine are going backwards a little bit here. And I thought, is that a ploy by them? I thought that to as get well. more publicity here, saying we're in trouble here because. They are getting more improved weapons all the time. Long range. I mean, I don't know when they've been delivered, but the US and the UK have just delivered these long range artillery sort of, uh, you know, weapons that can fire, say, you know, I think 150 kilometers. That will take out the Russian. So they are getting improved weapons all the time. Um, so why are they going backwards? So it's and I, I, I don't I don't blame them for this. They need to keep it high on the news agenda because uh, obviously it's, it's awful what's going on. And I do think sometimes when we see like, the Platinum Jubilee. I think sod that. There are kids mm. being killed in the Ukraine. I don't care about you know bloody you know seeing um, Craig Davy on the stage in front of the Buckingham Palace. I don't care. I, I quite really enjoyed that concert though. To be fair, oh, I, I, don't, I, I don't get me into that. It's like literally I think the biggest biggest scam around the royal family. I know people will hate me for that, but um, but no. So so uh, you know going back to that, I think they need to keep behind the news agenda. Uh, but no, he's an absolute ruler. I think. If you, do you see that uh, clip uh, recently? When he went to the toilet. I don't know if it was a toilet, but there was a fil- someone filming him, and he had like, six bodyguards to go to the toilet because yes, they, no? uh, Putin said so six bodyguards just go to the toilet um, because he is so paranoid against like, taken out, you know. And so if he gets taken out, it will change. But I did say if the if the G seven, all the biggest countries in the world, are serious about curing inflation. They've got to start off with arming Ukraine with whatever they need to stop that war, you know. And uh, you're not going to take out Putin, of course you're not. But you can literally, you know, give them all the weapons they need to take out all the Russian arms. Because apparently it's Russians, you know, military are not up to it a little bit. They're a bit dated and uh, they're struggling anyway. And like I said, they are now, the Russians are saying on state TV about 3,000 3, 3, soldiers being killed. The actual figure is 10 times that. And so... You know, if you lose 30,000 people, young people, from, from you know, the family's going to notice that, aren't they? You know, and so the, the mm. pressure's building. Um, so hopefully yeah, it will be a war of attrition. It's going to go on for a while, but I, th- I just think we've got to arm them. But, yeah, that in- inflation is a thing. And the, the only thing that's going to bring it down, I mean, energy is the biggest contributor to the inflation, you know? I mean, it's in everything, isn't it? I mean, uh, mm. from you know, if you're a business, you need energy. Um, if, you, if, you're, if you're an individual and you drive your car, you know, it's going to be costing you a, a stack load to fill up. Do you think, do, have you thought about going EV, Steve? Has that crossed your mind recently? Oh, massive. Well, I, I did, it's been on my radar for quite a few years. My only problem is, because I do do quite a lot of business trips to London and quite far out, it's just, and like, I stress about, like, timings and getting to jobs, going yeah. into London and the traffic. And I'm like, can you imagine just adding on another parameter of, hang on a minute, I've got to charge my car. Yeah. If I worked in the local area or I didn't do those kind of things, I would literally buy an EV car tomorrow. But I think next to my, I've got a hybrid now, but it doesn't really do much, if I'm honest. It saves me a little bit, very, not even noticeable, to be honest. But I would, I think I'd like to go for a plug-in hybrid on my next car, so at least I can drive locally uh, on electric, and then I've got the um, the fuel as a backup then if I'm driving long distance then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, um, we're in an odd, odd situation here, right, where a recession would be good uh, for the market. And I, 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 I say this is why. I mean, there's, um, there's only one way that... The, 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 the energy is going to come down. I mean, every time there's a recession, oil and gas prices take a hit, a massive hit. And they've been rallying like hell recently, you know? So um, the only way to get it down is literally, you know, have a recession. And then it would bring all the prices of energy down. And then that would help the margins of most businesses. And we can operate a little bit better then. So um, that's going to help in, in some way. But I mean, how, why, how is, you know, at the moment, where. You know, I can't see how oil and gas is going to come down. Normally, when you don't, when you can't see anywhere, I mean, go back a year and a half, no one could see why oil and gas would go up. You know, and yet we're at twenty bucks a barrel, and now it's one hundred and twenty bucks a barrel. So, whenever you say something may not happen, it normally does happen. You know, mm. I, I remember me and Russ Mould uh, for a long time back talking about inflation when, you know, no one was talking about inflation, and you say, oh, is it inflation? And, and people say, no, it's not going to happen. But of course, quanti- people said the worrying thing about quantitative easing and printing lots of money. Is it inflates asset prices? You know, people buy real assets; they go in price, and because real the value of real money goes down. So, yeah. So when when you don't see something happening, you can't see it happening. Generally, it can happen. You know. So I don't know what would be the catalyst 
uh, the, the, the only thing you see, the catalyst for reduced energy costs, oil and gas, is either Ukraine stopping, the war in Ukraine stopping, or a recession. And that's Because at the moment, the, you know, the worrying thing yesterday was inflation figures are high, right? Uh, to a certain extent, inflation cues inflation, doesn't it? Because like you say, if you are, it's costing you, I mean, I, I filled up our car the other day, 120 quid to fill it up, I think it was. And the, oh, that's nuts. And so, you know, I, I think, have you thought recently, but everyone behaviorally will change, won't they? If you're costing you a chunk load to fill your car up, you think, okay, I don't want to go on as many journeys now, you know? And then, the problem is, the problem is, if everyone starts going EV, which I think a lot more people will do now, mm. the only thing is that's going to pull more power from the grid and then prices, and, and all I can see, it, it happens all the time. For example, like, conge- I know this is probably a little bit out there, but like congestion charge. Remember years ago in London, it was yeah. free to go into London if you had a hybrid car mm. uh, on the congestion charge. Obviously, that's now not the case. And at the moment, it's, I, think it's, I think it's free if you've got an electric car. Is that mm. still the case or have they changed that? I don't know. But the problem is, if everyone's got electric cars, they're not going to suddenly let everyone do that for free, are they? They're going to start charging just a congestion charge, whatever car you've got. And I think yeah. if everyone starts going to EV, all they're going to do is move the tax from fuel or somehow move... Because they can't just eradicate the, the, the tax they make from uh, fuel on cars. Uh, yeah, they're, going to, yeah, yeah. they're going to need to make that tax somewhere else. So all I can see is when everyone starts moving to electric cars and becomes the dominant car or we're using more electric, they're just going to tax us or somehow take more money from us on electricity. So do you not think that's going to be the case? Yeah, but uh, what, what I'm, I'm thinking now, uh, yeah, and that's going to take a while anyway, isn't it? I mean, it's a long tail that, I mean, before people adopt EV. It's going to take years, because like you say, you've got range anxiety, and there's a lot of people in your boat to think, okay, same as me, I wouldn't, you know. If you can comfortably do, like, um, I think, well, I think I was talking to John May yesterday, and he's a friend of his, has an electric car, and he, he has a, an extra, he has a Nissan Leaf, and he has a backup pack in there, and he does... Um, I think about 200 miles a day on that. And he said, but normally you're, you're, you're safe on about 15,000 miles a day, a year, I mean, that you're okay with most EVs, you know, but many, many more than that. You don't. So that's a long tail adoption EV, isn't it? Until the, the technology gets better. Um, yeah. then it's not gonna but, but I mean, right now, you know, what's going to bring down the price of oil and gas? There's only three things I think is going to bring, bring it down. Um, one is the war in Ukraine stopping, you know, that, that'll help. I can't see that happening very soon. Uh, secondly, you've got um, the government intervention, pretty much. Um, I, I don't know if you saw that. Boris Johnson was questioned about, you know, so this, this reporter stood up and said, listen, in Ireland, we have, we have 17 pence cut in fuel duty. In France, they've had the same. In Germany, they've had 25 pence cut. In the UK, five pence. And then, you know, and right now, Boris Johnson's under a lot of pressure, you know. And I think, and he did say, well, we, we're not going to discount um, more discounts uh, on on on. Because if you look at it, I was looking. Hey man, let me scroll down the tweet here. I was like, ah, yeah. Do you, uh, do you not think though? So quickly on this yeah. one. So like, when people are saying why, I've read someone saying you know like fifty percent of tax on fuel is goes. Uh, sorry, fifty percent of the money we pay for fuel is taxed. And I think, and people are saying why can't they take some of that off? But then you've also on the other side, you've got people going, well, hang on a minute, why aren't you giving us? Um, allowances for our fuel going up. And I'm like, well, where do you think that money's coming from? It's coming from taxes. So you reduce the taxes that we pay and you can't then suddenly keep giving people... uh, I'm not not defending the government anyway, the the Tories, but I do think people are kind of wanting everything, aren't they? They want their cake and eat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, a lot of this... You know, regardless of who you vote for, and people say, "Oh, it's Brexit, whatever." But a lot of this price rise is global. It's not. It's not just you know yeah. specific to the UK. Um, it, but but other countries. But the thing is, Steve, this is it, right? Now, if we are heading to recession, right, businesses will go through. That's less tax receipts for the for the, for the country for the government, yeah. right? So they go way up. Okay, do we cut? So you know, what makes up a price a uh, uh, petrol per litre? Thirty-five percent is fuel duty. Seventeen percent is VAT. And you get fat on top of that, apparently. So they have a lot of room to manoeuvre there. You know, I'm not saying bring yeah. it and uh, cancel it. But I, I said these three things are going to affect this, right? Uh, and that, that's what right now, one is, um, you know, Ukraine. Second is government intervention on, on energy here, uh, cutting fuel duty. Thirdly is, is behaviour, isn't it? I mean, when people are faced with rising interest rates, and that's what's happening, 
Um, you know, they're, and they're not on fixed terms, mortgages, whatever that. Even businesses, of course, businesses have debt and they have to have loans to grow. Now, if that debt gets more expensive and the debt they have to service gets more expensive, then they're not going to take more people on, especially if the economy is not going to grow. So you, with the recession, is two points to it. First of all, the actual slowdown. And then there's a worry about the slowdown because then companies will not take on, you know, more people. Um, in fact, they'll probably lay off people. And so that side of it, you think, a government's got to think, OK, What's worse here? A recession? In fact, what's even worse than a recession is stagflation. And the, the, the World Bank came out this, this week and said, UK is not going to grow next year. It's one of the only countries, I think it's us and Russia, <laughs> are the worst for growth. So amongst all, all European countries. So Boris here, he's got a leadership challenge pretty much this week. Uh, he's, he's seen our figures from independent sources saying that the UK is the slowing, slowest uh, growing economy in, the, in, the, in, the, in Europe, pretty much. And... He's faced with, he needs to do something. I think he will do something. But also, you can't just, like I said, give away just free money because that's, that, you know, it manipulates the markets, it distorts the markets. To a certain extent, inflation is a cure for inflation, isn't it? You know, the price of everything goes up, you stop buying so much stuff. Yeah. That, then, that then slows down the economy and then that, um, you know, our energy prices will come down because people aren't using as much of it, as much as it, and... Um, and so, and then you got on top of that interest rates going up. So it's a worry here because we're going into recession. I think you've got, mm. you've got inflation happening plus interest rates. So inflation on its own would make people tighten their belts a bit. But then you've got uh, you know interest rates yeah. as well. And on top of that, I heard on the news they're starting to push out the rumours bloody COVID going oh, up again. You're like, oh come on! It's like, can we just leave that now? I know, I know, I know. It's, 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 that's it. I mean, it, the news, uh, uh, you know. Organisations don't help, do they? So like they, no. they, they, they realise fear works, and um, they're saying I'm, I'm looking at patients admitted to hospital here on the on the government website. It's, it's like, well, it's an all time low. I mean, what are they seeing? I don't. I mean, so uh, we're all. I, I enjoy. You know I, I, mean? I enjoy listening to the news, and yesterday, literally, they they started talking about that, and I turned it off. I was like, no, I'm not even going to get sucked into that. Come on. Yeah. Well, I thought about switching off. You've got to switch off, you know, because I mean. Uh, literally yesterday, you know, sometimes you, uh, Twitter, sometimes it's doom scrolling. You know, all you see mm. is bad news. And that's not the world, you know. And then, because they, they pick up on the bad news. They pick up on things that, oh, this will get to eyeballs going. Yeah, in COVID, I, and it, in fact, I just saw someone retweet and quote Sky saying, F off. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't need it. There's you know, enough doom out there, you know, starting up with COVID. And I was like, and I was like, yeah, but, and, 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 you know, yesterday I literally had to just get up. Get the dog, go for a walk, and um, throw the ball for her. And I think, you know what? Life isn't about looking at screens. You can get, 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 a girl, get off it. Remove it. Remove the sort of emotion from it, because it's just, it drives you to, And you can see why people, you know, in, in bear markets sell, because literally mm. the narrative chases the fear. And uh, they sort of, you know, and that fear begets fear, and that gets selling. But uh, sit tight. You, think, you know, the business we're in, investing right now, they've got good growth. In a, in a lower growth environment like the UK is going to be, you've got to find these companies that are going to grow. You know, that's it. Now, the companies we have are, have good growth pending. Um, they're good. They're well, they're decent values. Some of them are cheap, very cheap. And so, and they've got lots of potential. So uh, it's just, you just got to sit and hold tight on you, really, you know. Yeah. And, uh, it's a bloody annoying, but uh, there we are. Um, are you, um, are you uh, up to anything this weekend, Steve? Anything? Oh, yesterday. Oh, God. Megan's obsessed with the patio at the moment. It's I can't believe yeah. she clean. I, I asked her on our WhatsApp group yesterday if she jet washed the patio, and she said, "I thought she was joking." She went around and cleaned it on her hands and knees with wet wipes. Every now and again, is she, is she uh, mental? No, no, no. Every now and again, I do see her with a wet wipe out there cleaning the bits. Not not all of it, but I mean, you know, if there's a little stain or coffee for that tea. But um, you know, uh, so part of it, it's amazing actually. It's like another living space now. Nice weather. It's an extended room outside the house, you know, because we've got proper um, these nice comfy things you can lie on and sit down on. So um, I would advise anyone with a little bit of a patio, get, because we, a while back, we just had seat and chairs up there. They weren't that comfortable. And then we saw our neighbours had this really nice patio set, you know, uh, with these nice cushions on. And it becomes a living area. They put all plants around and we've got an egg chair. We've got, you know, a, a fire pit and all that. It becomes a nice, you know, mm. extra room outside the house. And now we just sit out there of an evening, you know, well, not, not many evenings, on a weekend maybe. And then we just uh, play some music, have a few drinks and uh, get the fire pit going. It's a nice extra room outside the house, you know, it's lovely. Um, so I saw a house yesterday. In fact, talking about house prices, right? I don't know if you saw the charter surveyors of 
was it, chartered surveyors of, of basically the housing market, they posted for the first time in nine months negative on their index sentiment. And that's not happened in nine months. This is the last part, basically, of a, of a bear market. When you see everything rolling over, then property starts to roll over. Uh, that's the sort of last leg down. So we are near a bottom. But, um, and I've noticed, like I said, I'm, 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 are you subscribed to any of the portals, the apps, you know, like right move and on the market? No, like no. Until I'm actually looking, I only look. So it just makes me feel really bad about my house. So I just like, no, nah, I just don't look. What do you mean? Why do you feel it makes you feel bad? Well, because I want a big house, and every time I look, it's just realise it's just too expensive. So, yeah, but keep your eye on it, though, Steve. Because I've honestly, like I said, a few months back, I had to check whether I was registered with the apps. There's nothing coming on, hardly. You know, maybe one a week. What's going on here? Have I, have, have, I, have I set it to just once a week? But I haven't set it to. You know, every time there's a new property, I get notified um, on three of the apps. And um, but now, literally every day, there's a, one or two new properties coming on the line, and you start to see this now. People are realising it's towards the top of the market. Interest rates are going up. If they want to sell a house, probably now is the, the, the next month or so is probably the last good time to sell. Um, you know, and get a, get, a, get a above average price. You know, really punch above your weight in the price there. And I think it's going to roll over a little bit. And I think uh, over the next year, you'll probably see, uh, you know, you can get a good deal on a house probably. And then I think the market will rally first. And then so if you're in the market and you want to use the market to buy a house, I think it's good timing because the market will rally first. And then the house market will rally say, a year after. So um, the problem I've got is I've got a house which is probably lower end. It's only a two bedroom house. So although my house is extremely high in value at the moment, as with everything else, because a two bedroom house can only go to a certain price, the house that I would want to upgrade to is also twice as much, which is a yeah. lot more. So it makes more sense for me to buy when the market's down because although I'd get less for my house. The discounts yeah. I'd save on the bigger house would be more, wouldn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, don't, don't remember, right? What you get in in literally, you know, in this kind of market with, with a raising you know interest rate environment, you may get some distressed sellers, you know, because people extend themselves, don't they? Doing good times and they borrow more than they can afford. Yeah. And then something happens with their job or their business, you know, that they didn't see happening, and all of a sudden their, their mortgage rate goes up by like five hundred quid a month more, and they can't afford it. So you may even get people downsizing, you know, in a high interest. Well, so see, this is my future plan, really, because I'm hoping once we come out of this bear market, I'm hoping my stocks uh, kind of rally, so I get a bit of money kind of making there. The house prices come down, and then I can probably try and avoid up in my mortgage and just probably taking a bit of cash out and um, yeah. getting a bigger house without actually, yeah, getting a new mortgage. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, but, As interest know, rates go up. <laughs> Yeah, I, do you know, the only thing I'm annoyed at really in this market, I realise, is that I haven't got enough cash. That's all. That's you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't, I'm, I don't buy into the theory. This is one of the worst recessions ever, and all that. Of course, inflation is high, and, but they always come round. The markets always recover, and I wish I just had more cash. You know, and that's, uh, it's hard to time the market. Yeah, it's hard to time the market of that, but because um, this is not make no bones about it, this is an opportunity right now. And I said, you know, like Buffett said, I don't know about today or tomorrow or next month where the market's going to bottom, but if you scale in, you know, to a decent fund or a decent business that's good value, is growing over time, you'll do very well because uh, the market's cheap. Um, okay, any, any, I watched any TV recently, Steve? No, I've got um, Stranger Things, a new season on my um, my list ready to watch. I'm just kind of waiting for a good week, whole free weekend to watch that. I'm hearing good things about that. So if anyone watches Stranger Things. Yeah, I don't know. Did I tell you about the, we went on a, on a narrow boat, right? I, I, oh, I, you couldn't really miss it. You were posting pictures yeah, yeah. every two minutes. So. It was good, actually. But you, you, we got there. We got there. Me, Fred, Monty, Megan, of course, and, and Lola the dog. And the guy showed us right. We got on there. And there was one point where we just, all of us were in the sort of the... Living area, the kitchen area, right? This narrow boat. We looked at each other. Thought, this is narrow. <laughs> we just we ignored what the guy was saying. We just looked at each other, smiled, and went, "How are we going to live on this for like four days? It is very narrow." I mean, they're not, they're not joking when they call it narrow boats. But luckily, the, the 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 weather was lovely, so it was good. It was good, and you, it's odd because we we went from Bradford upon Avon up to Bath, and it takes like two days to sort of get there. You look at the map and you've done 10 miles. <laughs> you think, what? It's like nuts. And uh, it's, it's good fun, though. And uh, you've got to fill up with water, of course, the showers. I don't know if the guy who's, you know, we, we showed us around at the start, he said, how long are you going for? I said, four days. Oh, you, you, you won't need to fill the water tank up. My conclusion on that is that guy probably doesn't wash, you know, because <laughs> we filled it up twice. And uh, on the way back, 
we got off of this. Oh, there's some lovely scenery there, you know. You go past these areas and you're chugging along, and it's like two miles an hour or something. And so we got to um, pull up this water, with, with, you know, fill up with water, and make it so I'm going to walk the dog along the bank there. And I said, okay, so Fred and Monty helped me tie it up and, and moor it up there. And I was filling it up, it takes about sort of 10 minutes to fill up. And then we started going, so where's, where's, where's mummy? I said, I said, I don't know, she's gone walking. I said, and I said, well, give her a call and say we've filled up. She said, no, I think she wants us to catch her up. I said, where, where's, I said well, give her a call. I said, she hasn't got a phone. So oh, excellent. So we had, went to pull away because someone else was behind us wanted to fill up. And uh, we pulled away there. Half an hour later, we couldn't see Megan. I said, where the hell is she? Why didn't she take a bloody phone? I said, well, I don't know. She said, I said, Freddie, you sure she'd catch her up? She said, yeah. And then we, but 10 minutes later after that, we still haven't seen her. And then all of a sudden, but another five minutes, we saw her, right? She was standing there with Lola. Just standing there. I said, where you been? So I was hoping for you to catch us up. I said, have you noticed when you're on a canal boat, a narrow boat, and you think you're doing like 10 miles an hour, and then someone on, on the bank on the tow bus walks, walks past you. Past you. <laughs> <laughs> you realise, I can't catch you up. It's physically impossible to catch you up. If you're walking at a normal pace, it is you are going faster than a narrow boat. Uh, but that's how slow it is, but it's lovely. And uh, But... So we had three and a half, four days. Three and a half days were good weather. The last sort of three hours uh, of the evening, so sort of, I had to want to get to a certain point. So I was on the boat on my on my on my own, really, basically in in a bin liner and with a hat on, peeing down with rain. I shut the hatch, of course, and the doors. And the kids were inside just fighting. Megan was watching some TV or something on the on the laptop, um, and I banged my head twice on the hatch. I got a cut on the forehead, cut on the back of my head. And I was literally sodden wet. So that part of it, you know, the last part downed it for me. But I'm coming around to something to watch here. So I suggest to Megan watching this um, documentary on Netflix called Bad Vegan. Have you watched that? I've seen it, but no, I've not seen it. Uh, I've seen advertising. Oh, I've watched yeah, it. Yeah, it, it's, it's worth watching. It's mad. It's mental. Absolutely mad. This, this lady basically gets, gets fleeced by this delusional man who says to her he's in the black ops, you know, he's special forces. And he's got all this, and he basically rips her off in the restaurants. And all. It's amazing. But what's annoyed is, uh, you know, I, I, I come across this. I said, oh, Megan, I've only watched the first episode. This is something we could watch together. You say, oh, okay, yeah. So that night when I, you know, I was, um, went to bed in, 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 in the narrow boat. Two she days. watched it. <laughs> she watched all of it. I know, she said, I've watched all of it. It's good, that. I said, well, what are you talking about? We're always looking for things and looking together. That annoys me when that happens, you know? She would well, literally... No, what, are you, are, what are you doing? Retaliation then? I said, well, we're now going to watch it again now, so... Mm. Yeah, I know, but, uh, but the thing is, she does that to me, right? She'll watch something, I'll watch the next two episodes, and I, I generally will wait. That annoys me, I know. I say, no, come on. Uh, the, the, the laws of uh, in relationships here, that has to be written in law. You should not well, skip ahead. You, you should then make her watch them again. Yeah, I know. But in fact, although, I, although I know Megan and she wouldn't. So yeah, la, well, that, la, so. Last night I started watching it, right, and she fell asleep. So uh, there we are. So, uh, but, but, no, but watch that. Bad Vegan is worth watching, honestly. It's only four, oh, okay. it's only four parts. But um, yes, yeah, but this lady in a restaurant, and things go wrong, and, and uh, this guy, and you realise why do people get? It's, it's a bit like you know Tinder swindler, but this guy is a maniac, you know, absolute maniac. I mean, is highly delusional, and she's convinced by it. I don't see why people get sucked in by this because obviously everyone in the restaurant was suspicious of him, you know. Uh, and he just come in and sort of take over. So who the hell are you, you know? But um, yeah, but that's it's worth watching. How people get caught up in these, you know, scams, and they believe. Um, you know, and he kept saying to her, no, listen, don't worry about that. We're going to get lots more money. I'm, I need this to get more money. Mm. And I think, well, this is nuts. Tell you something you'd probably like, actually, which is quite a couple of years old, and it's the prequel to Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. I think you'd like that. Yeah, no, I've watched, I watched. I have watched that. I'm going to watch the next one. Uh, it, it's, when he started off, it was quite um, slow, but I, yeah, I liked it a lot, and I thought he well, could, he'd be a good spin out character, and he, he was. And it it start, starts quite slow, but I quite liked it. Uh, and I, I realised now the next one's out, isn't it? Yeah, well, I watched um, I watched the first season when it first came out because I love Breaking Bad, and and then I just completely forgot about it. And we're up to season six now, and I've literally probably watched season two to six yeah, in the last good. couple of weeks. It's good, and I'm like, literally, I cannot stop watching it. It's like, I keep me up late at night. Yeah, and I, go, and I get back into it. I, I've watched all of them up until the last. Do you know why there's quite a big break? You had a heart attack, didn't he? Yeah, the guy. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah, because yeah, it was because they made the first season, and there was quite a long time, wasn't it? That's why I think I forgot about it. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, Bob. Odenkirk. Uh, yeah, I, did, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, he had a, he had a heart attack, apparently, halfway through uh, things, so they stopped. But yeah, it's um, cool, I'm going to watch that. When I, when I finish Bad Vegan, <coughs> I'm going to catch up on that. So, uh, lovely. Cheers, Stevie. Right, have a good next weekie. Bye bye bye. 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 
The Share Pickers Weekend Podcast with Justin, Paddy, Peter and Steve. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research.